God Rides Upon the Storm. Stay tuned, Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong and bring discipleship tools to the body of Christ that we might develop a rapture-ready body of believers who are ready when Jesus Christ comes back. I feel that I am a herald in the last days in the way of the king. I hope you'll help me and share these videos, share the podcast, get them into people's hands. We're, uh, I've made an app, and I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the in the comments below. Boy, I'd put it put it on your kids' phones, man. You you pay the bill for it. Put something good on their phone so they can spend time with God every day. These are bite-sized devotionals that I've uh, spent the time to put together. You can use these to build your family up. You can use these for family devotions. You can use them if you're a pastor of a church. Uh, put them on your church Facebook page. Put them, uh, put them out, send them out an email. However you want to do it, man. I want this stuff to be used by the body of Christ to help uh, strengthen believers. And not everybody has the time to put something together like this, uh, but I've spent years in ministry. I know how to do it, and I'm willing to do the work. I hope you'll share it so that more people can hear about it. Anyway, I want to leave a nightlight on for you. That nightlight is out of the book of, uh, of Nahum, and it is, uh, the Lord is, 1 in verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in, in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and, in the, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. What he's saying here is that sometimes the storm isn't an anti-God storm. Sometimes God is riding on the storm. And God is always sovereign. That's the basic thrust of every one of the prophetic books and every one of the biblical writers is God is a sovereign God who declares the end from the beginning and he's never dropped the ball. And sometimes you'll look at your circumstances and you go, well, where's God in this? Look, God rides upon the storm. God is moving and doing something that is that is so complex, your feeble three-pound brain can't crack the code or figure it out. Well, look, if you could, you'd be God. But since you can't figure it out, it's okay to trust God and allow God to use that storm to develop you in a profound way. In fact, I believe the storms in life are sent to drive us to God, to draw us to God. And if you respond to it the wrong way, you allow it to drive you away from God. Listen to how uh, Moses writes about this in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou wilt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. In other words, when bad times come, look to God. And if you look to God, he'll show himself to you. He's not playing hide and seek from you. And then he says in verse 30 of Deuteronomy 4, When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, and that's our time, the latter days, he said when these tough times come, when hard times come, here's what you need to do. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice, so your job is to turn to God and be obedient to his voice. And then in verse 31, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. He's saying God's going to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death. God's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God's going to be with you in the fiery furnace. God is going to walk with you through the hardest of times. When the world throws you in prison, God will take you to the pinnacle of power. When the world is out to destroy you, God is going to use you in a supernatural, powerful way. When you're in the pit of despair, God is going to do a great work. I want to close with uh, Chuck Swindoll at uh, a book called The Finishing Touch. And there's a little segment I clipped out of one of the devotions. It's about William uh, Cowper. He said, he said, William Cowper would take the stand in defense of all that I have written. He passed through a period of great crisis in his life. Finally, one bleak morning, he tried to put an end to it all by taking poison. The attempted suicide failed. Then he hired a coach. He was driven to the Thames River, intending to throw himself off the bridge. But he was strangely restrained. The next morning, he fell upon a sharp knife, but the blade broke. He later tried to hang himself, but was found taken down unconscious, still alive. Sometime later, he took a Bible and began to read the book of Romans and was gloriously saved. The God of the storms had pursued him and in the end won his heart. A rich life of Christian experience 
but not without constant whirlwind of storm. Cowper sat down and recorded the summary of the Lord's dealing in these familiar words. And I'll only quote the first verse. You need to look it up and read the rest of it. God moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. What a good God we serve. Things are going bad. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord God, some of the people listening to this are in a pit of despair. God, some of them are thinking about ending their life. Stay their hand, God. Draw them to you in a close, abiding, rich love relationship relationship. And like this thrice or four times failed suicide attempt, you turned him into a master artist who wrote poetry that has transformed the 1800s and the 1900s. What a good God you are. I, I pray that you'd use these in a mighty way just the same. God, take that period of darkness as a backdrop and shine the glory of your hope into their lives and bring them into an abiding, saving relationship with you them, not only their families, but the entirety of eternity. Grant with us your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.